Today we are taking a look at Amazon stock which has been on an incredible run up 90% over the last 12 months yet we have Wall Street considering this stock as a massive strong buy as well as seeking alpha giving this a buy rating. Today's episode we are going to do a deep dive. We're going to look at how the company has progressed over the last 10 years on their top line revenue as well as bottom line net income. We're going to take a look at the health of the company, their total cash versus their total debt. We will also touch upon the, the dividend payment when we see them starting to pay a dividend. We'll look at both insider selling which we have seen a lot of over the last 12 months as well as institutional buying. We also want to talk about a very interesting article about the future of Amazon, how they will continue to increase their free cash flows by also reducing their operating costs. We're going to take a look at some of their metrics, why we see this as a very strong company. And for those that don't like looking at individual companies, we are going to take a look at a brand new ETF, the VT Vanguard Total World Stock. And you can look at that consideration as opposed to investing directly, whether it's into Amazon or a particular individual stock. As always, we will run the company through our own intrinsic value calculator to get not just the intrinsic value, but also our acceptable buy. And what we want to do, we want to specifically focus on the DCF model, giving you what we believe to be a low, medium and high forward growth rate. So you can understand to see where the analysts are expecting this company to be over the longer term. So jumping straight into the historical performance, what we can see phenomenal up 90% over the last 12 months, over the last five years up 102%. And if you've been a long term shareholder over the last 10 years, you would be up a very strong 1046%. Now we do note it is pretty much right there towards its 52 week high and does trade for a forward P sitting at 44.27 with a market cap just shy of 2 trillion. Now, in terms of the company's growth, as always on the top line, whilst we may look for 3 to 7% growth year on year, that is for a more stable company. Amazon is a fast grower. As we can see, they've increased their top line over the last 10 years by essentially six times, going from 89 billion to 575 billion. And from this graph, it is easy to see that they are growing it consistently year on year, and it doesn't look like it will be stopping. Now, in terms of the bottom line net income, what we can note from there, in fact, December 2014, they did make a loss 241 million. In their latest annual report, a net profit net income 30.4 billion. So it has grown very rapidly over the last 10 years, although we do note some inconsistencies, notably December 2022, where it did drop as well. But overall, on the longer term, this is a company increasing their top line as well as bottom line at a very rapid rate. Now, we will get on to future expectations shortly too. In terms of the health of this company, well, they've also increased their cash and short-term investments very rapidly from 17.4 billion to 87 billion in their latest annual accounts. And we can see the trend over the last 10 years, that cash position has been building year on year for the large part. In terms of their essential total debt, now numerically and directionally, what we do note is that it has in fact increased from around 14 billion in December 2014 to a very large 161 billion in December 2023. And in fact, it has increased at a much rapid rate than their total cash. So we can focus on the net debt to EBITDA to understand if there are any red flag indicators based purely on that total debt balance. Now, we have had a few companies, notably Meta Platforms, that did introduce, initiate a dividend this year. Now, whether or not Amazon or Google, the likes of these companies, will, we aren't too certain. We cannot predict this. But if we were to take a look at their earnings per share on a forward basis, and we were to look at a payout ratio very similar to what Alibaba has done, very similar to Meta Platforms, it is between the 20 to 20% range. So we do foresee if there is a dividend to be initiated over the next 12 months, the yield will be very minuscule between 0.23% and 0.45%. As always, do let us know your thoughts. If you were a shareholder, you would prefer to see a dividend paid or because of the metrics we're about to come on in terms of the ROIC, that they should just keep reinvesting that cash back into the business. Now, let's have a very quick look at their growth metrics. So they do, in fact, get an A-grade. Year-on-year -year growth 
just under 12%, significantly higher than the sector median. Forward looking as well, they are anticipating around a very similar growth to their top line. And as we can see, the industry leaders, the majority of them are averaging around 3.8% expected. And we also note the same is to be said for the EBITDA growth as well as the earnings before interest and tax. So very, very strong growth with this company. It doesn't look likely to be slowing down as well based on those forward estimates. In terms of their profitability, well, again, very strong A plus grade. We see their margin 47% above the sector median, their bottom line margin marginally better at 5.3% with the sector coming in at 4.58. So a lot of metrics that we can, you can take a further look if you do want to pause the screen, but overall they do get some very strong grades for both profitability and as we saw on the growth. Now, in terms of insider ownership, what we have to talk about here is it's quite significant at 12.3%. When we do look at the likes of others, it is a lot lower, in fact, low single digits. What we note is 5.58 billion of insider selling over the last 12 months. As we can see, the majority of this did come in quarter one of 2024. Now, when we take a look at this, what we can see here is that it has been quite a few times by different CEOs. As we can see here, they have sold a number of shares. In fact, the 4th of March, we see Andrew J, the CEO, sell 50,000 shares for around $9 million. And we see a very similar position with the director, Jonathan R, selling around $1 million worth. So, what we do know here is there is a lot of insider selling going on right now, as well as Jeff Bezos selling quite a considerable number of shares. You can factor this into your own investing thesis, but what I would say it shouldn't take a large weighting given the fact that when insiders do sell, it isn't a bearish signal. But again, let me know your thoughts below. You may have a different consideration of this and you may believe that in actual fact, it is one to avoid. In terms of institutional ownership, well, 72.2%, 47 billion worth of sales while we have a lot more, in fact, nearly double worth of buyers by the institutions. If we look over the more recent quarter, Q4 of 2023, a lot more buying than selling. Q1, again, a lot more buying than selling. So whilst insiders are selling, institutions seem to be adding a lot more to their portfolio. So something to consider. But as always, never copy what they do and always do your own due diligence. Now, in terms of the earnings, a few things just to point out from their latest earnings in December 2023. On a quarterly basis, they were up on their top line 14%. Bottom line up significantly, earnings per share up significantly. We can see this was a very strong quarter for the company, hence why we have seen the share price increase quite rapidly over the last few months. On top of that, what I have noticed is the trend over the last four quarters. They have beaten both earnings per share as well as their revenue every single quarter over the last year. So you can see the market will be expecting something very similar when they do release their next quarterly earnings. Now, what is quite interesting to note is that they are growing to over 750,000 robots working in the warehouses, which is very, very, very good for their bottom line, as they will be replacing over 100,000 humans. Now, we're not going to get into the detail of whether or not this is what they should be doing. But what we can see here is that they are rapidly increasing their use of robotics. If you do look back essentially into 2021, they did in fact reduce their employees by 100,000. Now essentially in 2022, they have 520,000 robots. And when we are looking at right now, 750,000. So they're reducing their headcount by increasing the number of robotics that they are using, which will likely be a lower cost basis for them to run their business. And that will be shown on the bottom line. So that is a bullish for investors, in my opinion. But again, if you want to give me your thoughts on this, do let me know whether or not you believe this is something that they should do and whether or not you see the future with the robots taking over a lot of jobs that we do see now that employees are doing. Now, just to also let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want to gain access to this, we do run through 10 stocks with a massive upside completely free, as well as if you want access to all of our other articles, do click on that pinned comment below. Now, in terms of the metrics of this company, what we can see, their free cash flow has been growing over the last 10 years. We do know their share price did dip significantly into the 80s. Between 2021-2022, they did have free cash flow worries. What we can see, though, that rebounded very strongly in 2023. It's expected to near double that in 2024. Now, do remember that that's nearly a 100% increase as that will factor in to our valuation model. 
terms of sales growth, very strong. Double digits pretty much every single year over the last 10 years. And as we did run through earlier, their top line has increased at a very rapid rate. A few things to note is the fact their shares outstanding has increased over the longer term. So your position as a shareholder would have been diluted if you were an owner from 2014. But again, if the share price has gone up by over 1000%, you probably wouldn't be fast one bit. ROIC, I would like to see this a little bit better for a company of this high quality, at least a minimum 10% consistently. That would give me faith that Mandarin are able to effectively allocate their capital. We do see it as very inconsistent. So actually, if I was a shareholder, in fact, taking a dividend wouldn't be the worst approach. But again, let me know different investors will have a different investment thesis. Operating margin pretty poor over the last 10 years. What is positive to note, it has been increasing though over the longer term. And with the use of robotics, I would expect this operating margin to increase year on year. Free cash flow margin, at a minimum, we want to see 5%. I guess we do see that over the larger part, 2023, 6%. But again, I am expecting when we revisit this in 2024, 2025 metrics available, we will see a much, much better number. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA, now, we did talk about the fact that their total debt was increasing very rapidly. This is essentially the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, and shows us the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt and net of cash on hand. We want to see below three. Now, it is pretty low. In fact, 0.61 in 2023 expected to go lower. So their balance sheet isn't the worst. In fact, it does look fairly healthy looking at this data. But again, that is a fairly high level view. So let's jump into the valuation. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now we have three different rates, a low, medium and high. The first one we're looking at is a low of 20%. Now you could argue you want it to be higher, lower, it really does come down to your own investment thesis. What I would say is if you do want to run your own numbers, you can grab a copy of this valuation model to get to the own intrinsic value and acceptable buy of companies in your own portfolio by clicking on the pinned comment below. So starting off with 20%, we also see the free cash flow year on year. What we use is the discount rate. With that, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with their cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding. And we can see based on a 20% forward looking rate, they would now be trading pretty much bang on at their market value. We get a sense of undervaluation here, given it is 46 cents difference. But you get the point. It is looking right now to be at value if this is what you believe. And as we can see, this is the low rate that we have gone for. Now, if we were to use a medium rate of 24%, you would see a value of 237. In fact, when we go 24, we can see here 237. And with that would be an implied upside of 28%. Again, you may believe that's too low at 28%. And we can see here 28% would be $301 implied upside of 63%. Now, again, you can grab this copy of this model, run your own numbers through. But for example, if you do believe that's way too high, it's going to be low at, say, 14%. For argument's sake, you can see the trading value be 127. Now, as we did run through earlier, look on their metrics, they are expecting nearly 100% increase into the next year. And for today's episode, we are going to go with the low rate of 20% and pull it through to the final tab calculator. So the intrinsic value in today's episode for Amazon is purely essentially the DCF model at $185. Now with a value of 185, we essentially use our margin of safety and we use a 10% level and execute on that if it meets three criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. Now, it really depends as an investor whether or not you believe that this company does trade at a premium if you are happy to buy at essentially a 0% margin of safety. If you were looking at a 5%, it would be above to 176, as we said, 10% at 167. And for those at 15%, 157. Personally, I like to look at value plays at around a 20% margin of safety. So near enough, that $148 mark is where I would consider a position, although I do hold this indirectly via ETFs. But as always, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. So Amazon right now, in our opinion, trading near its intrinsic value. Bear in mind that is off the growth rate of 20% forward looking over the next 10 years. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast, well, they see upside of 14%, $211.
and that essentially means upside 14%. But when you look at that $211 mark, it is in between the two assumptions of 20 to 24%. So forward looking, they are estimating around 22%. Now, again, this will come down to every single investor, what they believe. It is very subjective. So let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As I mentioned, for me, this is trading pretty much at its intrinsic value. So for me, this is definitely going to be one that I wouldn't look to add. But let us know below. And what I would say, if you are someone who doesn't like to buy straight away an individual stock there are different ETFs that you could consider today's episode we can put the spotlight on VT this is the Vanguard total world stock ETF it does have an expense ratio that is very decent at 0.07% market price of $107.61 now in terms of looking at their holdings as we can see Amazon is in fact their fourth largest holding with a weighting of 1.99% Top three is comprised of Microsoft, Apple, and NVIDIA, which does seem to be a recurring theme in the majority of those ETFs. But again, this can be one for your consideration. You also have Meta and Alphabet included in that position. Now, in terms of the performance, historically, what we can see here is over the last year, it is up 22.75%, a very strong year for the market. When you expand over the last five years, around 10.95%. Over the last 10 years, around 8.77. And if you have been holding this since inception, around 7.8. Again, index funds, ETFs, they're not for every single investor. Different investors are different strategies. But do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe you do prefer an ETF. Maybe your strategy is half ETFs, half individual stocks. But as always, if you enjoyed today's episode, do smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.